Hey there, this is John Henney. I am a voice teacher. I also train voice teachers with an online academy. I've written a couple of books on singing, teaching singing, and I also do some reaction videos on YouTube. And I recently did one on the poet and the pendulum and Floor Jensen and her brilliant singing. And I noticed in the comments, as I talked about her approach to vowels, people would say, well, she's not a native English speaker. That's why she did these vowel modifications. And that's actually not exactly true. I don't agree with that. Uh, as a voice teacher, I really hear what she's doing with the vowel as somebody who understands vocal technique and a singer who understands vowel modification and vocal acoustics. Listen, I, I realize if you're a fan, you know she's a great singer, but she really knows what she's doing. As a voice teacher, I'm telling you, she really knows what she's doing. And these, these shifts in the vowels are, are so brilliantly done. So what I'm gonna do today in this video is just break down what she's doing and really go deeper into the acoustics. I'm not going to do a reaction to a whole song. I'm just gonna go to the poet and the pendulum. I'm just gonna pick a few places and go a little deeper. So this video is going to get a little geeky. This is more for the hardcore. So if you're really a part of the Nightwish Army and really want to delve into the vocal technique, or if you're really interested in singing, this video may be for you. If you want to watch somebody just enjoying the song, go check out uh, my other video or go watch another reaction video. So with that having said, I want to talk about how the voice works in, ter in terms of the acoustics. When you create a note, what's happening is your vocal folds are closing over the air and you're compressing the air molecules together. And then when the vocal folds open, you get this burst of vibrating air. And it's actually not vibrating at just one speed, it's vibrating at multiple speeds. In other words, there are multiple pitches within every word you speak or every note you sing. And what happens is all the information coming from the vocal folds is filtered by our vocal track so that when we move from e -a -a to different vowels, we are actually filtering out some of the information and then boosting other information or other frequencies. And that gives us not only different vowels, but also different color. Now, I want you to think of these, these bits of information as croquet balls that we have laid out on our lawn. And it's nighttime and it's dark. And I've got a flashlight. And what I want to do is uh, turn on my flashlight and illuminate one of these balls, or at least get pretty close to it so you can see them. When we are speaking, all these bits of information, all of these pitches, if we uh, think of them in terms of the balls, all the balls are close together. They're only a few inches apart. So when I turn on my flashlight, no matter where I point along this line, it's very easy for me to illuminate one of the balls. That's a low note. That's why it's easier to speak and we have a wider range of vowel sounds. I can bounce my flashlight all over the place. I'm hitting something. But when you sing a higher note, the bits of information get spaced further apart. Just go with this. I know it, I know it sounds a little kooky, but these, these pitches are spaced further apart. And these balls now, instead of being just two inches apart, they're a foot apart or two feet apart. Well, this is a European band. I'll say meters. So they're a meter apart instead of, uh, oh gosh, now I'm getting confused going between the English measurement and the European measurement. Yours is better. Uh, ours is a mess. Anyway, um, so now we have greater distance. And when I turn on this flashlight, it's much harder to hit a ball. And I'm more likely to fall in between the spaces of the balls and not hit anything. And when you're on a higher pitch and it's harder to align our resonators 
with the information that we can fall apart up there. And that's why you see singers in there. They're opening their mouths way too wide and you see them straining. It's not because they're just straining to um, stretch their vocal folds to get to the pitch. They're actually messing with their resonators. They're not lining up with the acoustics of the note. And so they, they just get into all types of vocal trouble. So what Floor does is she moves the vowels around she knows how to aim that flashlight so she doesn't fall into the dead spaces and so she manipulates her resonators her vocal track to align with the sound waves in an optimal way and to do that you have to adjust the vowels you do vowel tuning and you take them out of the realm of speech and you modify the vowels and i'm going to point out a couple of instances where she does this. Now, the first one is rather subtle, and she's going to say the word, is it, I believe it's uh, rain. Let me just listen to it real quick. Oh, it's days. days. Good. Now, this may help if you put um, headphones on or some earbuds. Listen to when she sings the word days it suddenly gets a little bloom of resonance and it warms up. Listen to this. Yeah, it gets this really nice sound. Now listen to the way she pronounces it. She doesn't say days, she says days. Now I know you may say, well, that's a bit more of a, the way an Irishman would say days, but, or an Irish woman, but, she says days, not because of an accent, because she wants to warm this up. And when you move from A to A, the tongue comes forward. And when the tongue comes forward, your throat resonator, because the back of the tongue acts as an acoustic room divider, your throat resonator becomes a little longer. And that, your throat resonator, gives more of the base of the sound, and your mouth gives more of the bite and the treble. It's quite fascinating. And when she does that from days, that days has more warmth than days. Let's hear it again. Little E in that sound. It's just, it's so subtle. And even though she's not up on a high note, I love the way that she colors that word. Now, I want to go a little further uh, into the song and look at her her belts because this is where you start to get into trouble this is where the flashlight it's very easy to not land on the ball that you want to hit or if you land on the wrong ball if you're trying to to tune your resonators to a part of the sound wave that's starting to get out of reach that's where singers start screaming and yelling she doesn't scream and yell she nails this so let's move on a little further Right there. I cannot die. I'm a, I'm a whore for the cold world. So right there. Listen, listen to all these vowels. I cannot die. I'm a whore for the cold world. You've got all these different vowel sounds and consonants and all of them can conspire to, to make you crack. I think she's on a, is she on a C or a D there? Let me check. So she's just into her trend. Yeah, she's on a D. So that's right at the top of this vocal transition and it's really that's where singers get into so much trouble and there's this area of transition from the lower register to the upper register and what most singers will do when they want to try and sing like floor is they start pulling up their chest voice or their lower register and they just start to yell rather than going into this 
mixed condition. And the way that she does it is that she takes all of these vowels that are moving back and forth and she pulls them into this neutral spot. And the spot that works so well there is uh. And if you put your finger on your, your larynx, your Adam's apple, that bump there, and you say ah, uh, when you go to the uh, you will feel it drop. And that gives us a little more length of this vocal tube and it, it brings out more of the richness and it also stops eh, this from coming up. Because when your larynx starts to come up too much, it's easier to squeeze. It's not that you can't sing with when your larynx starts to come up, but it tends to cause problems. So what Floor does is she stays more in an uh. So rather than pronouncing it, let me get back to it. I cannot die. I a whore for the cold world. She pronounces it. I cannot die. I a whore for the cold world. She stays in the uh. Listen to it again. All of it sits on this uh. I cannot die. And it keeps her in that balance. And she doesn't go, cannot. When somebody's screaming, they would be going, I cannot die. And she's staying more, I cannot die. I, 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 rather than I. She's tuning these vowels so well. And now I want to look um, where she goes for a different vocal color. And she tunes into her head voice. Now in this section, she's going to sing with a more legit sound. Um, and what she does is she's going to tune out, she's going to filter out those bitier uh, frequencies, those brighter frequencies. And so it gets this warmer, almost more hollow tone. It's the difference between saying ah and whoo. So she's going for more of that quality and listen the way to the way she says the word in the way she goes from me to in it's gorgeous Talk. hear the way she pronounces that she doesn't go <laughs> she doesn't say me in. she says me She blends them together because that the E has a, a sweeter, rounder sound than I. I is a little harsher, has more high frequencies. Now, that pure E, if she wanted to belt, she would modify that. She's actually filtering the vowels differently now because she wants a different vocal effect. Now, how does she say the word the beneath the pain, beneath the blue? Listen. It's beneath the, so it's a little more open, but now when she goes up to this F into that head voice, she changes the way she pronounces the. I'm gonna take you back a little bit. Now, so pain and rain rhyme, but she does not pronounce them the same. She pronounces pain and then the rain. Why does she take those vowels when she goes up so rounded? Because what happens is when you round the vowel, you remove the higher frequencies. You can hear. Oh. As you round the lips, you're, it's like an EQ system and you're pulling out the higher frequencies. And so what you're left with is this very warm, fluty, floaty sound. She's, she pronounces the words the and then the ain 
of rain and pain differently. It's not an accent. It's her going for very specific colors and she's doing this with absolute mastery. And if you are a big fan of this band, I would encourage you to um, listen with headphones, focus in on her, and listen to the different vowel colors. When she sings with more intensity, the vowels are a little more open. She's filtering in more of those upper intense frequencies. And then when she wants to get sweeter, the vowels close down, her pronunciation changes, and then she gets the warmer sound. And it's also combined with more intensity, the vocal folds. I mean, it's not all acoustics, but the acoustics, they're a huge part of what she does. So I hope that was uh, helpful for you. And if you want to know more about me, please visit my website, John Haney, and check out my podcast, The Intelligent Vocals. If you like this kind of uh, science-y stuff, I think you'll, you'll like the podcast, and we'll talk soon.